Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to our Tuesday Raw Real Talk Healing Edition with me, Janet Namaste. Mm -hmm. And we are going to connect now to Kristen Collins, which I see that she's there. And today we're gonna to be talking about all about living and abiding by your truth. What is the month, every single month has a specific energy associated with it. And the month of May is associated with speaking your truth and with choices. So that being said, may we welcome Kristen Collins, who has made a choice nine months ago, and then I don't know how long ago when um, going through your healing journey where you decided, I choose me, right? So welcome, welcome, Kristen. I missed you dearly. I am so excited to see you, to be in space with you, and to have this conversation with you because you have been pivotal on my journey. I love you, sister. I love you too. I love you too. It's um, it's an honor, and um, you know, it's interesting. Like Mariama brought something to my attention, which I never even realized, and she said, "You know, Kristen." There's, there's so much love between the two of you because, you know, I don't believe in competition, either do you, you know, especially as women, we have to empower one another, you know, and comparison, as we know, is the root of all unhappiness. And what I love, what, what I love about Mariama, I love so many things about Mariama, <laughs> but of how observant she is and you know, how she, she mentioned, she goes, you know, Kristen always says, well, thank you you've been to, to you. Thank you. You've been so pivotal to my healing journey. But yet, yet we haven't told our audience of how it came from surviving to thriving. And now this beautiful book, which congratulations to you um, for publishing. I bought my copy, by the way. Um, but if you could share, because I was just the catalyst. That's all I was. You're the one that did the work. Um, you're the one that went into the doors of acceptance and of movement and of action. But what is it exactly that, um, that your um, healing journey entails? Like, what was it exactly? Because I'm sure <laughs> it can help hundreds of thousands of people. Oh, Janet, I... Uh... Well, first of all, for the month, you could buy the ebook for 99 cents as I get ready to launch it. And because the book is the journey to healing. And mm -hmm. what's so, why I'm laughing so hard is because it wasn't like this straight line and like, here are 12 things I did to heal. They were hilarious. Like at times, like sometimes very hurtful and sometimes utterly hilarious synchronicities and divine crossings. And right. so what Her Phoenix Rising is, is a reflection as I sat and thought about what the heck just happened? How did I get here? What are my learnings? And then by reflecting on that and journaling it, like you inspired me to do, that was my release, my heal. And then by choosing to share it into the world, that's just hopefully facilitating for others their inspiration to wake up and heal, to live that life of optimal well-being as we all learn to tell our truths and be comfortable with them. Absolutely. But where do you feel like, um, when was it in your life when you realized, whoa, you know, I am not in alignment with my truths? Um, for me, and I love that question, thank you for that, because as I look to connect with others to help them, I think we all have our unique moment if we're paying attention to that wake-up call. My yeah. wake-up call was very obvious because I was sick, and I didn't know why I was sick, and I no one could diagnose or, or help me. So in hindsight, which is beautiful, right? Um, my mental lack of healing and lack of being able to be present and release and, and find that joy and satiation from within, I was mentally making my body work in overdrive and my autoimmune system was just shot. And that was after an entire lifetime of, of not healing from my traumas. 
So for me, it's almost a blessing because mine became almost like you couldn't ignore it because <laughs> I had so many things starting to fail on my 50 year old body. But for our shared community, your wake up call is that internal nudge. And, you know, my encouragement is, you know, I was blessed because mine was blowing up. I had no choice but to pause. I think for right. others, though, you know, be present and be like, huh, I, you know, what's that intuit intuition telling me? Right. You know, like there's, there's different signs and it's specific depending on um, the essence of your soul, right? You know, depending on your birthday, depending on your name, this is on a spiritual standpoint, we have certain destiny, we have certain free wills, there's certain, um, and we saw the entire pre birth plan, we signed the contracts, so there, there's really essentially that nothing that we can't handle. However, when we come onto this planet Earth, the band of forgetfulness comes on. And we forget, otherwise, it's going through life with a cheat sheet, like I know this will happen. And we're not really ascending, you know, it's almost like, we're constantly like going up a, uh, like a down escalator, just like climbing up, climbing up, climbing up in this. But when we realize you're like, oh, I could just sprint up and then, you know, get on another escalator because it's that wake up call. And when we're living like this hamster in a wheel, sooner or later, we're going to get the wake up call. And the last wake up call is actually it's in our physical body because um, we are emotional beings, right? So, um, you know, we've, we've all, ex you know, so, so many of us, especially people here on the Raw Real Talk Ceiling Edition, this is all about, of, you know, of being, of being honest, of being real, of it's not just about reading a textbook and, and speaking about theory, it's actually living it. And um, in order to actually be a quote unquote expert, you don't need those um, it's great to have a PhD and a master's and an MBA and everything like that. You know, that's, I, I give so much reverence and respect to those, but real life sometimes gives you what you need of, you don't need those like different um, initials at the end of your name. You really don't. It's, and um, how do we learn? We learn through our traumas. We learn through our trials or tribulations. Um, so, Without getting too personal, because I know you did share it inside your book, how old were you when your um, was the beginning of the first trauma that you can actually remember? Um, I believe it was uh, five and a half. And mm -hmm. yet, um, my, I would venture to say that it, it could have even started in vitro. Um, and, and while I do contemplate that, and I'm curious about that, that also doesn't necessarily matter to me at this point, you know, 50 some odd years later. And I do share of trauma without getting graphic or specific, but I also didn't want the book to be about my trauma. And I really wanted it to be a celebration of the release of that trauma. And Janet, you have been a catalyst to help me release that at a cellular mm -hmm. level. And I want to go back, if I may, for a quick second to all the amazing of folks course. who are brilliantly educated and have lots of acronyms after their name. <laughs> and yes. There is yes. absolutely no disrespect at all um, to folks who have their life's work have been, you know, that education, that expertise. I think one of my greatest awakenings in writing this book was trusting me even when I wasn't fitting into the standard model. The last chapter of my book is called The Day I Knew I Had to Leave Healthcare. And that is not to be, you know, disrespectful to healthcare. I just realized that I was trying to live my life and do my work through a lens that wasn't fitting for me. So what I want to bring into our community on healing is even when experts or folks with a, you know, a lot of acronyms after their name or, or your, your spouse or your family or your best friends encourage you in a certain way and try to help you. In a for me, it was getting comfortable with I hear you and I respect you and I appreciate your input, but I'm going to move forward, you know, with what I'm feeling, even though 
at many times, Janet, I felt like a complete outlier and in, not in alignment with anyone. That is scary. That is scary to be like, no, it's just not what I think. It's not how I feel. It's not how I'm going to do it. So I encourage folks to find that inner voice, to find that opportunity to, to be courageous, to step forward in their own truth without judgment of others and without fear. And by the way, when you step out and if you find out you're wrong or you fail, because I promise you I failed, um, then it's just a learning ex I've had to learn to trust myself again. And it's been a long time since I have. And that's been one of my greatest joys. It's beautiful. It's like um, people that have been in a coma and for so many years that they, when they wake up, they have to relearn how to talk, how to, how to walk, how to eat, how to you basic functions. Because when we are in this um, fight or flight mode for so long, and we just like, you know, go along with the masses or, or, you know, and just kind of become a soldier of whatever people are saying to us or governments or structures or parents and our soul actually always, that's the voice. But in order to actually listen to it and to hear it, there ha you have to press pause for a moment. Otherwise, we're going, 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 going. You know, sometimes when we're very busy, it's a deflection of not wanting to deal of what is really inside of us. And it's through those darkest moments in which is the greatest awakenings that happen. That's when we can persevere, you know, and we have a choice at times to go into the, you know, sometimes depression or doubt, because especially when we don't feel supported, but that's also when we don't, we're not aligned by our truth or we're afraid to speak because of judgment. And this month, which I absolutely love that your book came out in the month of May, because this is the month of actual, and we're going to speak about it. Um, tune in, guys, this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. You could go on my bio or on the Raw Real Talks bio. And it's a free monthly vibe every Thursday. I channel, not every Thursday, every Thursday of the first of the month, I channel in the forecast of the entire month. And this month's theme is exactly what is in what is a correlation with your book, which is not just about healing the healing journey, but it's also about being in alignment with your truth. And that is absolutely essential. This is the month, month the month of May, where um, where Damon, all people should be like you. All people should be like you. We're mirrors of each other, dude. <laughs> Truly. This is the month where it's about speaking um, and our, our choices and not fear of being judged because our truth is absolutely 100% sacred. And if other people may not agree with it, it's okay. They may have their own journey, their own personal things and their own history. Oops, Kristen has left. So I think there must have been some um, disconnect over there because I saw her clicking. But um, let me see, I'm going to call her in. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to, maybe she can, one moment. She's going to probably request to be in again. But in the meantime, I will speak about the month of May still. Um, this is also a month when it comes down to health, go to the dentist. Many people will have issues probably with their teeth. Um, and or even like of certain aspects with our thyroid, by the way. Um, what do I mean by thyroid? The TSH level or it's, it has to do with our hormones as well, because when we're not in alignment and we think that we don't have choices. Hey, sorry about that. No worries. It seems like there's a lag. You know, I saw that you froze. Sorry, yeah, you know, you know, technology, it's always challenging. Um, but I did get to hear what you said. I couldn't, I couldn't find my, um, my uh, sound again. But what I want to weigh back in on and what you were saying about that trust and that judgment, that, and again, I get, I get into yes, this. Yes, let's, let's go, let's. Yeah, uh, that was, and it aligns with the month of May, 
and the work that you're going to be hosting on Thursday night. Wait. <laughs> I look forward to our monthly vibe with you every uh, first Thursday of the month, um, where it's about speaking our truth this month, I believe is, is what we're going to be covering. And, you know, I used to speak my truth from this place of having to be right, having to be heard, and needing a lot of people to agree with me. Because I was passionate. Mm. I was passionate about what I felt, what my experience was, what I had to say. And Janet, it was a major, major switch for me over, there's a couple of years there, 50, 51, 52, 53, of like deep, dark introspection, like what the heck, right? And now that I'm coming out of it on the other side of it, there's just like this calm in the truth, in my truth. And my truth varies and it like changes as I grow. But I no longer Certainly. judge or am threatened by other people's truths. And that's part of what was making me ill. Yeah. And it was part of my safety issue as having major, major trauma for my adolescence, right? And so just getting comfortable yes. with, this is my truth. I hear your truth. Your truth is different than mine. But for every single human on this planet, there is a divine and unique truth. And who the heck am I to judge yours or be threatened by yours? And that was when the healing of my physical body began to occur, where I was able to release the judgment of others, most specifically and importantly, release the judgment of myself. Huge lesson for Absolutely. me. You know, they say our issues are in our tissues, right? So mm -hmm. our cells can hear us, you know, our thoughts have, have power, you know, our thoughts become words. And when these thoughts, when these thoughts permeate in our body, they become constricted in certain organs, depending on what emotional fields have um, is in alignment with that chakra. For instance, mm. if, if we are, you know, in our mindset and we're not aligned of seeing what's in front of us, you know, and we're denying of what we see, there'll be issues with the frontal lobe or migraine headaches or things like that. When we're not aligned with perhaps, um, you know, holding our, um, not even opinions, but of the essence of our soul and speaking up, or not saying what we want to say, um, or have been holding in our essence for so long, there'll be issues with our thyroid, there'll be issues with our teeth, there'll be issues with, um, with even our throat, our tongue, and even bacteria in our mouths, which then will affect, if we're not speaking our truth, will affect our third chakra, which has to do with our solar plexus, which has to do with control. So all of these things that are that are happening on the outside if we're not aligned if we're not aligned with with what we're seeing hearing feeling and we're not we're only um ingesting and not digesting then it's going to get stuck in our body but sooner or later we will be woken up and not in a, not in a bad way mm -hmm. you know actually the disease or the symptom is is the greatest asset because you, it gives you an opportunity. Source has opened up, cracked open up a shell for you to have a chance and a choice to go into the doors of happiness because we have only a certain amount of breaths on this planet, a certain amount of steps that we can take. So each moment we have to make sure it's a good one. So by you getting in alignment with that, and and writing this book um i can't you know like this is something when did i when did we do that session that you keep on clocking i don't know if you're there or not um oh i you when know, did we do I'm, that session where um i predicted that your book yeah you are such a catalyst for this so it was we figured that we've met about almost two and a half years right it was like Jan january two and a half years ago. And then when we did our session together, 
Um, so that would have been a, approximately two years ago. I love this story. And even though I attribute my stepdaughter, mm. Megan, as the inspiration for a book, that is true. She planted, she was a main plant about five years ago, but it was when I met you and you were doing work with me and you said, oh, you wrote a book. And I'm like, no, I haven't written a book. And you just smiled and you were like, oh, okay. Well, you're gonna. <laughs> and I was like, oh. and that was when I was like, okay, it's time. It is time. So you, you were the, the, you were the one that took my hands and we jump off the ledge and just start writing. And uh, it was what you saw in me, whether that's literally or, you know, symbolically that gave me the courage to try, to try, you know? So thank you. You're very welcome. What, it's, it's an honor, you know, thank you for your trust also. Um, so what advice, what tips would you give to those other women and men that feel that it's not that life is happening to them, but what advice would you give to those that feel that they just can't speak up? or they feel like this is this is just my life and that's it and they feel stuck for a moment like they're they're you know in in muddy waters at this moment what advice would you give to them you know and it's not just writing a book i know it's very personal but what steps could they take in order to really you know align with their essence oh my gosh i am i'm freezing cold right now i have chills all over my body uh, it is such a beautiful question and I have not yet uh, ar come to like articulate that concisely. So just what's bubbling up for me is you don't have to write a book and you don't have to share your story in a book format or on a video or on social media. <laughs> you, th my advice would be to sit quietly with self for a hot second. You know, just start with two minutes and right. see what bubbles up for you and observe it because owning your own story, it, it could just be your own awareness of it and your own acceptance and celebration. It doesn't have to be that you externalize it. My whole thing is about find it within yourself right? The answers that you're looking for, that love, that wholeness, that satiation is inside. It is your connection to self. And I thought that I had healed, you know, and, and released shame and, and, and anger and guilt and sorrow uh, 30 years ago. And what I found out, unfortunately, only a few years ago in the hills of Tuscany, uh, was that I actually did not do that healing work. I actually hadn't faced my life and accepted it and loved it as imperfect as it was. Instead, I disassociated from it really good. <laughs> um, so my advice to people would be sit with self and feel all of your emotions and release them mm. because you are not your emotion. You are the essence or being or soul experiencing this emotion. And by getting comfortable with self, right? From that place of wholeness, you can live this life. And it was that self-love, that self-care, that self-healing and actualization that now I sit, and yes, I've chosen to share my story via a book and, you know, holding space with you. But that's not my advice to everyone if that's not speaking to you. My advice is just sit with self and love self in the quiet of a closed bedroom door or you know, out in nature or with headphones right. on or whatever. And um, it's from that place of, of wholeness that you can then start experiencing your life of optimal well being instead of survival. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. You know, um, 
but it takes practice to sit with yourself because in the beginning you're like when you've when when we've been on this rat race of self sabotage not even realizing like I'll get to that I'll get to that I'll get to that I mean what are we in a race for who are we competing against I really don't know I'm not in competition with anyone but then we are it ends up that we feel like if I don't do this this will happen if I don't do this this will happen but being with self it you feel like almost like guilty I should be doing laundry or I could be doing something else or I could be on Instagram whatever it is you know whatever you know floats your boat but the thing is is that my advice at times of what what gets people there in this discipline in a way because it's like a muscle of being comfortable with yourself is um and this is what happened yesterday it is i told um i had a session late last night and i said bring out a picture of you when you were a little child when you were a little girl bef with, before you felt that your innocence was violated in a way or before when you saw the world of like what the hell did i sign up here for you know like there's there's not so great things out here too you know but to find a picture of yourself where you felt most safe and any time that you have that voice of judgment that self saboteur coming in like look at that picture of your of yourself and ask how you're going to be speaking to yourself you know so that moment of sitting with yourself it's really connecting to your inner child. This month of May is also a month of connecting to your inner child because we've neglected the essence, the soul of who we actually are sometimes because we're going going pushing pushing. So this allows us to slow down and to reconnect because we would never be like, you know, mean to another little child or a little doggy or whatever like if if we see a child that falls on the floor and is all full of blood and hurt you're not going to be like you stupid whatever get up we're going to tune into compassion and i think you know the main takeaway that i got from what you connected to is like with what what you spoke about is finding time to yourself is about compassion the key is compassion and that's where you can find forgiveness even if you have been um wrongfully hurt by somebody else which many of us have some worse than others but it's not you know and um it's finding compassion towards ourselves we're not broken we're wiser because we've survived amen sister and i thank you oh. i thank you for writing this thank you my friend and i think that was one of the greatest lessons and there is a chapter in the book about that when i uh crossed with an acu um an Ayurvedic doctor, which I had never heard of before. And she enlightened me to the fact that I had, I had absolutely no reserve. I had no energy left because I was living a life of one direction and that was output and giving, but I wouldn't allow any, any right. receiving because I was so, you know, hunkered in and that's not living first of all. And second of all, I'm, I'm ripping off everyone else of the joy of that giving but I only liked myself if I was giving. I didn't understand that I was perfect and worthy of my own love for just being and just breathing. So yeah. every day I woke up and I was like working 18 hours a day to give so that I could like me. And that's, that's really interesting. And the other thing I want yeah. to comment is that hindsight Amazing. is that child. And you know, I can't thinking and I'm like, I don't remember a time when I felt safe. So some of us may not be able to find that child, you know, and go back to that point. Yet I can tell you from today that that's okay because I'm safe now. So I just encourage our, our raw real talks, you know, community to think about all, all there is is this present moment and the past is a learning experience, you know, but it's not here. Don't worry about it. Move on. And, you know, and the future is nothing. All we can control is who we are in this present moment. So with that, I would love to spend the last few moments just asking you to put out your audience.
offering Thursday night where this will help inspire people to find their inner truth and voice, irrespective of if they want to, you know, externalize it. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, so two things. Um, we're also going to have on the Raw Real Talks bio, you can find, um, you're going to find the link to Kristen's uh, book on Amazon. You can do that as well and just help support this community. It's 99 cents, you know, and really it's going to uplift the vibrations of our healing community as well. And then the other thing on our the bio, you can also um, subscribe to this and, and join in this Thursday. It's a free webinar at 7 p.m. Every first I take um, the energetic vibrational, um, vibrational, I guess, uh, message and session. And I tune into every single week. So you'll know what to expect. And it's not like a psychic reading. I don't want to be known as, as that. It's more or less of like the energetic waves. So you get to choose. I will never ever tell you what to do. But we I paint the whole picture of your opportunities. And then we always tap in about 30 something minutes in into a meditation. And then if you do show up live um, to the session, then you have an opportunity to win a free reading with me. And we do it right then and there on Thursday night that is randomly selected. So um, definitely um, sign up, go on, on to the bio, either on Janet.namaste, follow me there, or on Raw Real Talks. And um, Kristen, as always, it's a pleasure to connect. I love the Tuesdays with you. When I don't have them, I feel like there's like something in my core that is, <laughs> that is, you know, missing. But you know what? It's, um, you know, distance does make the heart grow fonder when you truly are aligned and you appreciate one another. So I appreciate you. And once again, congratulations on this. And thank you for inspiring and aspiring. Love you, sister. And thank you for holding such you. beautiful space and inspiring so many of us. I will see you Thursday night. Thank you so much. And everyone, until next week, we'll see you. Much love to you. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Janet. Bye. Thank you, love.